Hi there, David Costello here from Jetpack Workflow and Growing Your Firm Podcast. Today I want to walk through a bookkeeping workflow diagram. Now, if you're watching this anywhere but the blog, you can always go to jetpackworkflow.com slash blog to get free articles, free interviews, and many more free videos as well. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the workflow diagram. Now, before we start dissecting the example diagram we have here, it's really important that you lay out your own diagram, your own workflow process and understand the baseline of where your firm or practice is at. You can do this a number of ways. First, you can you know, use you know, pen and paper and sketch it out, or you can use whiteboard, you can use mind mapping, software like XMind. The point is, get a baseline of how you currently operate and use your workflow inside of your bookkeeping process. So again, you can have a whiteboard, you can have pen and paper, bring your team into the conference room, whatever it may be, and walk through all the steps in your workflow in terms of completing a bookkeeping job. It's also really important to include your team in this process because, of course, they identify and they do the steps each and every day. Uh, so they will have great insight into steps that are missing, steps that are bottlenecks. Um, and, and so you always want to include them in the process. So once you have the baseline together, it, it, then you can start optimizing your workflow and your bookkeeping workflow diagram. So let's go over a few key components inside of the one we put together. You know, when we're putting together workflow, we always like to put things in buckets because when you do this, you can optimize around a specific area. And you can see the buckets we put together are receive and confirm, process and fulfill, and file and follow up. This could also say complete and follow up. It's totally up to you, the terminology behind your workflow. But again, we are huge fans of putting things into buckets so that we can optimize specific stages in the workflow. So let's look at the first one, receive and confirm. So you need something from your clients, you receive this information, you review it, you confirm. If info is still missing, it gets sent back. In this case, when I do a baseline for for Jetpack or for clients or for anything else, we always identify huge bottlenecks in red. So I can come up to here and I'm in Google Draw right now and we can go ahead and label this as red. And so we can put this as info here and you can see that we're gonna do this throughout this entire workflow. The point is, is that if this becomes a very common bottleneck in receive and confirm, is there something we can do during the client request stage? Is there something we can do during onboarding? Is there a checklist we could put together for the client? Is there something that we can help them sync or automate? Are there video tutorials we can send over to them so they can have a great visual of how to get this information? You know, so often we'll speak with firm owners that say, well, I just asked the client for the same thing over and over and over again. Well, the problem is, is because this information usually sits inside of an inbox. And now the client has to go back and search for all the emails and try to find the one that had the instructions versus having a knowledge base where they could just go in, take a look at the video to export the information or to sync the information, whatever it may be, and then they have a matching checklist to upload it with, with visuals and, and video representation as well. Now, putting this information in place might seem very time consuming, but just imagine that you do it once and for every client now and in the future, you have this repository of information so you get the information on time and you don't have to be stuck in the inbox constantly sending over instructions. And so you get this type of information, you get this type of insight when you put things into buckets and you really start to focus on specific parts and specific tasks and specific bottlenecks in there. So that's a look at the receiving confirmation. Next, we're looking at the process and completion. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna process. If, if there's a review stage, we can go in. Now we can look at a client review right here. You can see that some of these parts might not be applicable to your bookkeeping workflow. So if that's the case, feel free to come into here. It's very simple. You can come into here, remove that. I can actually go ahead and put that right there and we'll go ahead and delete that. So we can see how you can continue to optimize these steps. Again, this is a baseline. If something needs adjusted, go ahead and adjust it. And it's say, let's say process review. I don't want to send it to a client. I'm just going to send him the final report or send her the final report. And then we'll, we'll move on from there. But again, we see two bottlenecks right here. Again, information missing. So I mean, this is becoming quite clear that this is something we need to start optimizing around. Apparently, you know, many clients are not getting the information or not understanding which information they need to send to us. So this is becoming a constant bottleneck in the process. Or maybe when you review, you're constantly being, you're constantly sending things back to the process stage. So maybe there's not clarity around the instructions there. Now all this comes from, you know, getting that baseline workflow and identifying the bottlenecks inside the system. Then from there, we can go into file and follow up or complete and follow up. Again, the terminology is, in, is entirely up to you. You can see that I'm gonna have to readjust the spacing right here. 
but you see how quickly I can optimize and adjust you know, using a tool, whether it's Google Draw, which is entirely free, or any other tool inside of the system. So we can say complete and follow up. And I can come into here, take a look at the review. Maybe we have a final meeting. Maybe for you, it's a final report and a phone call. You know, whatever it may be, and have that set up in the system. Maybe if it's a confirmation email. Either way, it lists out all the steps. And again, I always like to put payment and where that payment's going to be received in the workflow. That way, the whole team knows that. You know that, and again, you can identify bottlenecks or, or, or inefficiencies inside of your workflow around payments because nobody likes to chase down accounts receivables. It's not a value-driven uh, deliverable. It doesn't add any value to you or your client. It's just kind of backdating payment that you are already set to receive, but now you have to chase it down. You have to spend all the time doing that. So where in your workflow is payment, and then finally, you know, scheduling next steps for the clients. And again, if you if it's an email, phone call, in-person meeting, whatever it may be, make sure to lay that out. Again, it's about setting client expectations in your workflow and helping them identify and feel very clear about what the next steps are in terms of the engagement. So again, this is a quick look at the bookkeeping workflow diagram. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video or article, feel free to share it with a friend or colleague or team member. And for more free interviews, free videos, free articles, you can always go to jetpackworkflow.com slash blog to learn more. Thank you so much for watching.